All right, we're live on Facebook. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, before we start, let us know what city, what state, what country you're in. We were just talking about where we're all located. Dude, it's a little windy out here, right? You were talking to Jake. They're, they're even giving us notifications that they may shut down cell phone service, which is crazy, right? But uh, I'm out in here in uh, Southern California, Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, Malibu area. That's where I'm at. Marcus is on a freaking island, like living the good life. Marcus, what island are you on, dude? It's uh, Vancouver Island. So if you go north from, for a lot of people that don't are not familiar with Canada, I'm guessing, um, yep. stay along the coast, the west coast, so California, Oregon, Washington, and then you'll head past the border and you'll go to the big city, Vancouver. That's, uh -huh. that's famous. And then you'll hop on a ferry to Vancouver Island, and then you know people may have heard of victoria um from royalty and all this good stuff and yep. uh, we have a surf culture out there too called tofino on this Ooh. island i live in a place called parksville um right out of side of nanaimo so that's that's it that's and, where you're at dude nice what about an you? with chickens and and dogs and four kids i've seen pictures on facebook dude i know i yeah. see that I can verify. It's like an adventure park at his house. I was there this summer. He was showing me all the stuff he's doing and all the kids and projects he has on the go. So, yeah. I still need to visit you, buddy. I still need to visit you. You have to. We, we started building um, what was supposed to be a little shack or um, storage, and then it slowly became a greenhouse. Now it's a, a tiny home almost. So, you know. <laughs> Ooh, that's even better. Come on down. Up, I should say. Come Dude, on I love up. that. I love. It. Come on up. That's right, Ira. How about you, buddy? I never asked. Where are you at? You're like five hours away from Marcus. You said. Yeah, I'm at Street Tex HQ, which is here in Kelowna, BC. It's like the Napa Valley of Canada, so it's wine country, flowing oh. vineyards, and yeah, sunshine capita for Canada. We get a lot of sunshine. However, the winter we kind of get a little bit of inversion. The clouds come in yeah. and. It gets dark also and live, hibernate. You live there around that area? Yeah, so we live in, in Kelowna, but I'm native to Toronto, Ontario. So I did the whole nice. coast, coast to coast move a couple of years back. Nice, dude. Nice. I love that. Well, we got some people from all over here. Let's see here. Uh, Linda says she'll have some wine. So thank you very much, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> oh, it's good. Let's see, Chino Hills, that's like next to me. Ramona, California, San Diego, that's not too far. Ventura, obviously, Tessa and I live in the same area. Uh, Virginia, look at that. Atlanta, Orange County. We got a lot of California people today. Burbank, Colorado, Miami, Roseville, again, California, Maryland, Oceanside. You know, I just started watching a show about Oceanside, but uh, that's for a different thing. Today we're here talking about street text and talking about the flow that we have with, with these online leads. I think the secret of simplifying the Facebook ad follow-up, it's a big challenge, man. It's a, it's a pretty big challenge. And I want to start off by, by saying what we were talking about. I'm in the process of creating a flow chart that, that was inspired by a post that one of you tagged me on. And it simplifies the process so that people can look at it and be like, oh, okay, this makes a lot of sense. This is what I should be doing with these online leads from Facebook. Do you by any chance have that post, either of you? I do. All right. Yeah, I mean, that. we can start with that for sure. And this is, this is just one of many ways to do it, but I really like it because uh, Katrina Higgins is North Carolina and uh, she's been extremely successful and she um she's done double digit transactions now from this type of process so she's she yeah. she comes in um and basically she sends them a video and the video itself by the way is automatically sending out the moment they put in their their information and we can talk about what it looks like how it's submitted but it automatically sends an email that's the power of the, the virtual world we are in today, you can have an automatic introduction going out the moment they submit their information. And then, but she goes further than that. She's, she adds them into a system called KV Core, um, but she sends them the video and then she adds them on Facebook. And a lot of people don't do that. No. You know, 
a lot of people, they don't see the connection, even though they're obviously running a Facebook ad, they don't see the connection back to their personal Facebook. Um, but it's, you know, it's the best thing you can do to create instant uh, relationship opportunity. Yep. And so she's going to add them on Facebook or at least try to send them the video introducing herself, letting them know that she's a real person and that she's working on their estimate. Because if you don't do that right away, you're leaving everything up to interpretation, right? And an automated email will always go in the favor of that person. And they're going to be seeing life through their sunglasses, through their experiences. And most of the time that experience is you're just trying to sell me something. I thought this was a fill in the blank, ABC, one, two, three. And, and they're just gonna say, forget about it or unsubscribe or just say, I was just curious, like defense mechanism all day. So you or always want to daughter clicked on it. What's that? Or my son or daughter clicked on it. Sorry, that wasn't me. Oh yeah, or you know, what are you talking about? Like to completely not taking personal responsibility. Um, now, I she always, uh, this is what I love most about it, always says in that video that this is just an initial estimate. I always ask them to book their meeting with me with the calendar link. So the power of email is for me, the trifecta, the, the, the perfect email has got an open. It has a play. It has a click. That's the holy grail of an email, right? That's awesome. Open, play, click. Why? Because the open, obviously, you get the message there, the video, it's you introducing yourself, communicating who you are, humanizing the process. The click is the call to action. That's going to drive them to your calendar or Facebook or wherever you want them to go. So if you can get all three and measure that, that's the key. You don't let these happen just automatically. You have to be somebody that's going to be going for the, like hunting for the open, hunting for the play, hunting for the, um, the click. And you, you can't assume that your automations are going to do it. And you got to really come into the mentality of if my automation doesn't do it, I'm going to personally do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to continue to personally do it until I get that. If you're going to want to see 90% open rates. Do you think that's where a lot of people fail guys, where they think that, Okay, I set up street text or I set up my own Facebook uh, ads. Now I'm going to get the leads and people will contact me if they're interested. Is that something that you guys hear often or no? Yeah, I think it's important to, and I see Linda said, I'm not clear on what you're showing me. And I think it's important that when you're doing a Facebook ad and you're getting a lead on Facebook, they're coming in with a specific thing that you're looking to serve them on. So in this particular ad, the person has clicked on an ad that says, hey, you know, it's got their attention because it's a map and it's basically the, where they live. So they've clicked on it asking about their home value. So I think it's really important that instead of just sometimes we get a lead and we just throw them on a drip and we throw stuff at them in hopes that they're gonna convert. Where the conversion happens when you realize when someone asks you something, there's value in how you respond and deliver that. So when you put attention into the fact that they clicked on this to specifically get their home value, and then your follow-up is driven by following through on what they asked for, as opposed to the conversation being driven that I've just thrown you on any drip in my system, and I'm just going to drip yeah. on until you, until you come through. That's where people get lost. Even when you just throw them even an entire CMA, you, you've lost the opportunity to talk to them about why you need to get to their home to give them some more value on that CMA. So it's really important that the ad that you're running on Facebook, whatever the thing they're asking for, that your follow-up is delivering on that, as opposed to just throwing them in some generic drip in hopes that the person's going to turn over. People just feel like they've been clickbaited in that case. Can we maybe take a step back? And that's my fault because I jumped right into it. But can we take a step back? and take people quickly through what the ad looks like, what yeah. happens next, just so that people know what's there so that they know what they're responding to. Well, so just so you know, like from ad creation, from the, the, the ability to, to launch uh, an ad and funnel, that's such, such an important thing because you're not gonna even know what you should be running and how you should be running it. So what Street Text does is we have all these funnel ad copy and templates that make it super easy to kind of go out there and create the ad. So for example, if I were to go into to Wendy's account, type in Henderson, um, you know, and, and kind of use this whole model of someone were to buy your home, would you sell it, find its value in the current market? Well, I'm getting really clear on the 15 mile radius first and foremost. So when I'm creating the, the visual, 
when I'm actually inputting the, the text copy, I got to, I got to recognize 15 miles as a minimum radius. And a lot of people that do Facebook marketing don't understand that. That's it. That's the housing discriminatory act. Everybody has to do that. Even in Canada now is 24 kilometers, which is 15 miles. So when you create an ad image that you got to have that in mind, both in your text copy and in your image. And for example, this would, because if we're targeting Henderson, Las Vegas in that area, it's all 15 miles in that image. Okay. But it doesn't matter what image I use because we have a lots of funnel templates. Like right now, Wendy's doing a really killer one for Christmas. You know, what's your home really worth? Enter your address, receive your home values, a call to action. But the key on all these ads is you don't have to, to figure it out for yourself. You have us come alongside you really quickly show you how fast you can launch these things. And then before you know it, I mean, you really just starting with your pin drop. So if I were using Las Vegas, for example, I'm, I'm getting really clear what 15 miles looks like first and foremost, because if you don't start with your ad targeting, you're not really realizing where that 15 miles is going and who's going in front of it. And you could be saying the wrong thing on the ad and, and asking yourself why you're not getting lead flow. So you got to get clear on this circle of 15 miles for everybody first and foremost. So we always start there, right? And then when you actually get that dialed in, then you could go adjust your ad image to that 15 miles, adjust your text copy. And really it's just, it's simple, you launch. And Street Text has actually created the ability for you to launch these ads so easy and then really interpret the data the way you need to interpret it. Because at the end of the day, like, just like Wendy has with her Christmas ad here or a map ad and all these different ones on, you got to analyze your performance. And so for us, we know that if we can give you at least one of that every two clicks becoming a submission and we've hit a home run because 60% is kind of our, our benchmark, 60% of every click becoming a submission, that's unheard of in any industry, um, in the real estate industry. We haven't seen anybody that's even come close to that, especially considering that we, that we run hundreds and thousands of these tests to determine these numbers. So when you get these results at this significance, then when someone comes in um, and starts submitting their information, and so I'll go back to like, uh, let's see, I got so many ads. I'll go back to this, this seller funnel that is kind of one interpretation to be the same thing for the Christmas one. I am now a homeowner and I'm not a realtor anymore. I'm a homeowner, homeowner. And I'm just randomly scrolling down my Facebook feed, like, you know, from the moment I wake up till the time I go to bed and when I can't sleep, whoever you are out there, when you run Facebook, on your phone, you're just there for, to be entertained, right? Unless we're Tristan and we're, you know, doing stuff like you and me. Um, but most homeowners, they're just there for, for, you know, they're bored, they're buying some time and they don't, you know, it's just a habit this time. You know, you've seen that movie, Social Dilemma. You don't even think about it anymore. That's the, you know, that's the problem, but also an opportunity. It's a problem for sure. Addictions to this stuff more than any time ever, but also, you need to understand that's a huge opportunity for your, your, from your marketing standpoint. Because if people are spending more than a couple hours a day scrolling down their social media, you need to be in front of them, both on the sponsored element and on the organic friend element and becoming the influencer instead of being influenced. So when that person clicks through this ad and starts submitting their information, they're kind of like, oh, that makes sense. I got to give an address to, submit, to get my home value. So they're going in there and you know, putting in their address. Now, this is where the rubber hits the road because that moment is kind of like, okay, I got their address. Now these people are going to determine, oh, I got to, I got to provide my email to get a home value. Well, that makes sense. You know, logically, consciously, if this person kind of is deciding, but here's the thing, they have to give you permission with a little box. And in that moment in time, that's automatically sending out an email. Okay. Now that's the important part because if you leave it generic, you're leaving it into interpretation. So if I go to my um, Gmail right now, somewhere out here, okay, I think it's over here. Um, and I go into like this, you know, typically someone will like start with something that's very generic like this. It'll look just, you know, hey, received your Facebook request for the property valuation of blah, 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 and I'm on it. Now, that happens automatically as soon as the email is collected. And that even, you know, there, there's more information to this, by the way. The home is going to be like, we're going to ask them for information about their home time for selling name and phone number. But at the very minimum of an email is collected, an email is sent out. Here's where people get it wrong. You don't want this to be automatically sending out. You need to go in there and make it your own. 
And with the power of video today, the power of leveraging email video communication, you could create an instant introduction and really communicate not only who you are with your bubbly personality, but how you're going to help them and what you're looking to do to create a connection and why you're creating a connection. Why not simply going and hand them some sort of computer generated guesstimate, right? And they clearly are smart homeowners that probably have already done that research and you don't want to put it past them. Um, so this is really where it begins. And if you focus on those two pieces, both the ad performance and this piece, at least initially, everything naturally falls into place. Because obviously, uh, the deeper you go into the funnel, the more you're going to information and get about the home, the icing on the cake, the condition of the property, age updates, renovations, you know, sell date, immediately just curious refinancing, all that good stuff. Um, and then the ultimately the opportunity to get their phone number and really activate more automations in this case an ai a text message campaign um and we teach people how to use it we got i got so many tabs open geez um we'll don't even we'll we'll talk about it. there's an automatic ai that goes out and shoots them a text message as your assistant we call her julie um and that's equally as important but speed to lead is more for us speed to relationship speed to humanization of this process and creating connection and you don't ever want to leave it to interpretation. And that's the biggest problem I see with people is they run ads on Facebook and Instagram and they want their, their systems or follow up boss or Sierra or uh, Firepoint, whatever that is, to do all the work for them. And they're not creating any sort of personal connection. And I don't care what type of system you have. It, if it doesn't feel like a, there's this personal connection, an authentic, genuine reach out, um, you're only going to ever be in the numbers game, you know, of that one and a half percent in the industry on online lead conversion. Very true, man. A uh, question from the audience. Rama has a question it says, how much per month for a street text? And what's the success rate? That's a, that's a tough Active. question to answer, but the price is easy. What's the price? The price is a free trial to start. So, don't ever go into this and try to just pay for street text without experiencing it and getting a coach and just, you know, we have lots of great resources, a street text Academy course, masterminds, conversion workshops, ad creation, um, even custom ads classes and so forth and our Facebook group. And we give you all that for life, even if you never come and sign up with us, because we believe that it's all about timing and you really getting it. And it has to click here because your biggest investment is never going to be the money as it is your time. And you have to time block accordingly. You have to kind of be on board that you, this is education, you're training, you're coming to mastermind, you're coming to workshops, you're, you're working with a coach because there's the ad creation and the lead generation part of this, but also the follow-up and the integrations and your systems and scripts and strategies and you know putting your hands on it. <clears throat> so we do a minimum starting point of three months and we have six month and year options. So our full year is 1920 up front renews monthly at 160. And that's you're gonna be your, obviously your best option. We also throw in a course um, and we actually have some really cool courses coming out soon, but one course shows you how one of our best agents has done triple digits in terms of transactions. Um, 200 out of Texas and we give that to you for free. It's $250 otherwise. Our six months is 1,020, renews monthly at 170. And then if you kind of like still insured and you wanna try it out, and you, you think it's like, well, I need just a little bit more time. I'm going to, we call it our extended trial. That's three months up front, 600 bucks. Um, but you also got to factor in your ad budget with Facebook. And typically as a solo or newer agent, we want you to kind of think about a minimum of about 300 bucks of ad spend. Um, so all said and, and done, let's just say you're running a couple grand for street text for the year. Um, let's go 3,600, round that up to four grand. Let's call it six grand all in for the year. Typically, in most of your markets, that's going to be recouped with one deal and then some. Um, but we want to get you double-digit transactions. That's our, our challenge is to follow the success of our top agents. Like Janky is, you know, Patel and the uh, moderator in your group, Tristan. We're coming out with a course based on her follow-up because she's got systems. She's got processes. She's smart. Like I love that. You know what I mean? Jennifer Salter, who you remember, has been on one of these. Uh, we're creating a course with her way different animal, way different on the, like we love discussing disc profiles and like analyzing personalities because Janky is going to be way different than 
Jennifer, who's a third grade teacher, got into real estate and loves teaching and using video. Jakey doesn't use much video, but she's just as successful. So there's always ways to do this. You just got to find someone that kind of naturally suits a mentor for you. Mm -hmm. Don't reinvent the wheel. Use what you like, make it your own, and we'll work work through the systems you already have, the integrations you already have, things that you need, whether what 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 uh, what you've already invested to bring it into the street tax picture as well. All right, I like that. All right, so let's go let's go back to that original follow up screen that you were sharing because I think now that you've gone through that. And, and we've touched on some follow-up. I'd like to go through that one just so people can, can see the other options. Because you're saying, look, Jockey's got one, right? Then other people have some amazing- Yeah, I mean, we, can, we might as well make one for Katrina too. I mean, we could say yeah. that are probably about a dozen or more people in this group. Exactly. But, so when she sends them that video, just like you saw, um, <clears throat> she's going to send them a CMA. It's going to be more of a, a rough draft, as we call it. It's not going to spend, it's not, she's not going to spend a lot of time on that. She's probably going to pull out, you know, some of her own MLS information. You know, I've seen a lot of people do bomb bomb screen recordings to show, hey, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, they're all giving you these different price points. Yeah. You know, here's my MLS interpretation, but really shooting for the appointment to give them that true market analysis that they deserve. Yep. Um, and then she's going to send them, um, set them up for market reports of the area that they'll receive biweekly. That's obviously a smart thing. A lot of people don't do that. Um and then follow up, you know, you've got to follow up. Hey, did you receive it? What do you think about it? You know, everybody just misses that. You don't just give away your information and you're gone. I gave it away. They're just going to come ask me to list their home, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't happen like that, especially the top of the funnel, which is, you know, a lot of people need to still figure out, hey, what's the top of the funnel versus the bottom? You know, what, why am, what's the difference between paying Zillow and Google and all these other systems versus paying Facebook ads to generate leads, people that you're interrupting their newsfeed today didn't even, weren't even thinking about selling or buying and they just clicked on something. Those are people that, you know, we are, most of our buyer ads produce sellers because they're looking subconsciously before they even have had the chance to sell their house and, and sellers are buyers. And you're, it's, it's all about recognizing the type of lead you have and that this is a longer term system. These are, this is a system that continues to give the longer you spend with it. You know, people that have been with us for longer than a year are the, all the ones that have done the most deals. It's the people that are looking for a quick fix to their business in the first 90 days that often uh, we lose because they're, they're comparing that to what they think Lee should be ready to sell and buy with them right now on Facebook. Yeah. And, that's and I think like everybody. a huge takeaway here with Katrina is like, if you look at her follow-up, it's specific to the fact that they requested a home value. And what it's really designed to do is create a dialogue and conversation back and forth. So you can figure out what was the motivation behind the click. And we have it in our, our, our group all the time, people sharing how they landed on listings and landed on relationships with people in a backwards way. Because someone clicked on it. We have someone that said they clicked on the ad, um, they found out that the owner name didn't match the person's name. They figured out it was the person in the basement that was trying to figure out how they could buy the home, which led them to connecting with the landlord, which led them to a conversation, a listing appointment with the landlord who was actually looking to sell the home. And the landlord said, how did you even know I was going to sell? And let her know that the people in the basement had actually not qualified and they weren't able to buy the home, but she was looking to sell because that fell through. So it's really like your ad is a conversation starter and your follow-up is a discovery process. So when you're putting your follow-up in place, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to figure out what the person's motivation is. And then once you know what the person's motivation is, then how you deliver on that and you serve that person speaks a lot to your level of professionalism. When you're picking up the phone, you're confident mm -hmm. delivering on anything. Now they're getting the idea, hey, this person is really on the ball. So Wendy's account that we were just showing, she was sharing that a lead came in five months prior, but she friended one of her processes to find the person on Facebook and friend them. And she did that step. The person didn't respond to a single email in her automation. They didn't even respond once she friended them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We're now five months later and the person messages her on Facebook and says, Hey, I've been receiving all of your like 
consistent follow-up and I'm ready to list my house. Can you come on over? And this was a messenger response on Facebook. The key was, is they said, you were so consistent. The funny thing was, is Wendy says, I wasn't consistent. My systems and my follow-up and my process was. And that was the impression that that lead got because the way that she delivered on their original request, which was their home value. And she didn't make a story up about why the person didn't respond. She just allowed her automations to let that conversation float to this top. And that's what our automations do. That's how you simplify yeah. it. And that's how you concentrate your effort on the person that's actually responding. And then you do an extra list. These are the people that are active and responding. And the, you personalize that follow-up to those people. And you personalize not just the, the follow-up, but the automations themselves. Because part of what makes, I think, um, this system so awesome is you get to put your hands all over it. So if you're looking at um, even Wendy herself, like she has an entire drip email campaign that she's put her personal touch on. So the obvious is they get that automatic email and, and then they, they get this some sort of video introducing herself. But what you don't recognize is happening is that Wendy is also sending a personal touch, you know, and some people are teams, they have follow-up boss, they have like their own assistants and, you know, um, VA virtual assistants, all this stuff, right? ISAs and so forth. Some people don't, they're solo. So it's all, it works wherever you're at, but, now you can come in here and, and shoot a day four video that's going to shoot out four days later. And could you already know what your automation is going to do? You know, what your personal follow-up is going to do, you know what, in any endeavor, whatever you get from them or give to them, you want to have also automations built in to continue nurturing them with valuable resources and, and material. Um, and so she's going to have that. She has a day six, you know, what happens if my house sells? Will I be homeless? Will I have money to move out before closing? Um, this is the type of material you want to build in there. Homebot. She's introducing a home bot for the first time on day nine because she knows that system is going to be a smart nurturing tool for her. Um, you know, marketing matters. She has a, another one a day later where she showcases, um, you know, her drone videos and things she does for marketing. Um, and she's got a really cool bomb bomb template built into there. Uh, day 12. Hey, are we Facebook friends yet? You know, after all that great value and touches and personal touches and getting them home value and CMAs and so forth, she wants to make sure that they're connected on Facebook automatically, right? And so you're, you're doing these things, but you know, those are still automations and automations only come in and percentages. A lot of automations land in folders and spam and other things for that matter. So a true pioneer of street text, I think is somebody like Jennifer Salter, who's going to take all of those, study them, see what's being open, what's being watched and so forth. And then do everything she possibly can to also have that set up in her personal email, you know, as canned responses, change it up a little bit, maybe the subject line and so forth to get the open, to get the play, to get the link clicked on, because it's not just allowing your automations to do things. It's an intention of getting your communication received. And so you got to do that bring, personally as well. You bring up a good point. Somewhere in the middle of what you were saying, you're mentioning that you're, I'm just going to abbreviate what you said so people don't miss it. It's you're educating the consumer, right? And it's, you're treating it almost like, like how we treat social media, right? How we're connecting with the consumer based on that information that they want and that we have. Well, we're giving it to them in this process of following up and nurturing. And I think if we remember that part and say, well, the nurturing is really social media on steroids, right? Because you're educating them, you're showing them your value through the things that you offer and things that they don't understand, but they need to know. Mm, yeah. I think that that's key. A lot of people miss that. And they keep on spamming you. It's like, hey, you want to buy a home? Hey, why are you ready now? Do you want to see home tomorrow? How yeah, about yeah. this home? And that that's the wrong approach. Yeah, I remember a mentor once sent to me um, the idea of closing someone does exactly that. It closes them down. What you're really trying to do is you're trying to open someone. You're trying to open them up. You're trying to bring them to education and understanding. You're trying to make them feel like you're someone trustworthy so they can have a conversation with you and not all of a sudden feel obligated. Like the thing is, is as soon as I feel like I made you do a little bit of work, I feel like we're committed. Like we're in a relationship now where if your communication coming out to me is letting me off the hook saying, you know, I'm willing to do this work for you. I take pleasure in doing it for you. I have no problem giving you something more accurate. Even if you're not interested in selling right now, I just love what I do and I'd love to help you. 
you let people off the hook. It allows them to continue opening up the wrong relationship rather than like, I'm standing at your door. That's me knocking. You just clicked on my Facebook ad. Like I'm going to list your home because I really need this. And sometimes our communication, if we're not careful, if we read through it and audit it, it kind of smells of that. It smells of like closing, 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 as opposed to opening, opening, opening. That's a really good one, man. I had never heard of that before. I just put it in that chat. I love that. Write that down. And there's another, there's another thing like you're, this, this group is so full of gold. You look at Jennifer Salter, like writing, personally connecting with someone is so valuable when you make that connection on Facebook, wish them a happy birthday, check back in through like a Facebook message. I mean, you can see it even right here. She did that. And then she says, the, the response after sending them a her, happy birthday message is thank you for the birthday wishes and thanks for asking about the valuation because she says, hey, happy birthday. Would you like to me to send you an updated home valuation report? It's been almost a year, right? That's small little touch. That's why you become friends and we, we show people how to use Facebook as a CRM and use friends list and keep, keep, your, keep your leads at the little pipelines just like you would do with your own CRM. And now in this, she says the response is, thank you for the birthday wishes and thanks for asking about the evaluations. That has been on my mind. Good time to sell. Duh. I have renter in there right now. Her lease is up at the end of the month and I have told her that she can stay for the short term. Maybe we can get together in the first of the week. So Dude. it's so it's so valuable and we, we keep on hearing people do like, you need your automations, you need your personal touches, you need your follow-up, you need the home bot, you need all those systems, but don't neglect the most powerful tool in the world is the reconnection back to the personal side given that they're running ads on facebook you should be making personal connections with your personal facebook not your business page but your personal facebook create that connection get them as a friend so they can be uh, they can see the real you they can see what you value your family the food you eat all that stuff right so it's it's you think it's like oh that's dumb no it's important because they have to know and like you before they trust you. And so learning, if you're an influencer, which every realtor is, you'll have to learn how to become an influencer. And part of becoming influencer and be influencing properly, I think is, is transparency, is being authentic and genuine um, and not having some sort of facade that I'm just this real estate professional. It's not the truth. The connection is, is the, the key on this because it's a long-term process anyways. So let them get to know you in that process. And I think when it comes to simplifying things, I think part of what's made these couple people we've highlighted successful is this isn't something they do on the fly. Like if you ask Jennifer, if you ask Wendy, if you ask Jenki, it is time blocked. Like the reason it's come simple to them is because they put a process in place. And from this time to this time, they don't book anything their work that they're doing, the action that they're taking to build their tomorrow business is the follow-up process. And sometimes what happens is follow-up is something we do when we get around to it. But follow-up has to become part of something that we do every day. It's blocked into our schedule. It's purposeful. Like I know one of the things our system does is it provides you with a marketing number. So each time someone comes in as a lead, underneath their little name in the contact, there's a number. And the higher that number is, the more that person is engaged and interact with the communication that's going out, whether it's a text message response, whether it's an open, whether it's a click. So now you have a list of people in your contacts that have come through in a specific Facebook ad that you have an indicator, even though they're consuming it and they might not be responding, you know that they're interacting with everything you send. So that person should go on that personalized follow-up list where you do that extra special thing. Like you jump in the car and you leave a gift on their doorstep. You, you, may, you bring it to the next level. You do something different and you, you use your time well and your automations help you do that. It helps you let people pop to the top and then you focus your follow-up on your day-to-day -day on those top people. Like I know somebody in our group has shared before that they take all the leads that come in through Street Text. They use that marketing number to make a, a top 15. And then those top 15 are the people that they add that extra bit of follow-up on top of knowing that they're more engaged with the process. Extra bit of follow-up could be a, a simple $5 gift card from Starbucks, you know, on, you know, for the holidays with a nice little personal touch connection, you know, just to say thank you. And they appreciate that time. Right. So I, I've, 
people think it's all these hard things, but sometimes like we need to have all our systems in place and our processes, but we need that personal touch with it as well. I have people that, you know, send mugs and do Popeyes and it's, it's just, you got to, you got to kind of figure it out, you know, and it takes time. Like, that's why we don't do this little uh, month to month stuff. Like you, you need to, to look at street Texas as a long term, And I think, you know, mentally block it out for a year before you truly see like how massive these results can be for you. Cause a lot of this stuff you're in the first 90 days, it's just really putting all your systems and processes and integrations and everything together. And you're just learning. You're like, Oh, you know, light bulb, light bulb, light bulb, especially when you're attending masterminds. Our mastermind every week on Wednesday is truly the meeting. And that I think that really uh, sets us apart from other, every company out there, because we, there, there's no um, scarcity mindset with street text. There's no such thing as exclusivity on Facebook. Everybody's sharing and giving. And that contribution type of mentality is where really people do well um, because there's always something you can pull back into the way you do things. And you always have something to give to somebody that needs your help too. So something to think about. That's true, man. I was talking to, to a street text customer jockey because I talked to her often. And she's, she's telling me that her average over the last few closings has been 1.1 million. And I'm like, what? <laughs> off of, off of the, the leads, really? And she's like, yeah, that's, I'm like, that's, that's insane, man. She's already into, I think she's over closing 10, right? Over 10 since March. I don't know what number she's on now. I think it's like 13, 14, 15, or 16, or, or a little bit more. Um, and that just goes to show you, it's just, it's going to be different for everyone based on their follow-up systems that they have in place, right? And that consistency that goes into their work. So I really think what you said, which is setting a section of the day specifically for doing this will really get you to that level that you want to be at. And I think whatever it is, even if it's not online lead follow-up, if it's past client follow-up, sphere follow-up, whatever type of follow-up, if you don't have that time set, it's just not going to work. And you're going to be complaining about how real estate sucks or how this sucks, or this is terrible. I can't break through. And look, there's no reason you should be doing terrible right now in real estate. In the next eight months to 12 months, you're going to see the most amazing real estate environment for agents to grow. So there's no excuse. It's just, it falls on you. And I think you're uh, like this, when life gets flipped upside down, like it did in 2020, people start rethinking things. We're heading into the holidays. When I'm heading into the holidays, that's the time where I have some space to have some discussions. I sit down and talk about like where I want to go in the coming year. So this is when people are thinking about what they're doing in the coming year. And a lot of us will take our foot off the gas and ride it until things get busier. And the problem in, in any business and entrepreneurship is if you like just start coasting you're never working on your tomorrows. You're always just working on taking care of the fires today. Then you're not building your career. So it's not like a career is about, you know, building in processes that include forward thinking, thinking about the future. So during the holidays, like you have a little bit of downtime, but these ads running on Facebook, people are clicking on them. They're thinking about it. They're not going to make the decision until month nine and month 12. And they're going to make it when the person that's been following up with them has consistently stayed top of mind. I remember what somebody saying, you know, you want to occupy that space in their brain when it comes to real estate, you want to start occupy, And that starts with delivering on what you promised you were going to deliver on and creating, a, I mean, Janky you're using as an example, she has a very specific buyer ad. So the ad isn't just like, get on a list. It's like, get on a list for this in this particular neighborhood. What does that do? It narrows down the leads that are coming in. You know specifically what they want. But now I still need a little bit more info from you to get you the list that you actually want. So that requires a conversation. So it makes a reason for her to be legitimately reaching out because I don't want to just give you this list. Like what price range are you looking at? Like, have you qualified? Like, where are you at in the process? Like, and it creates a dialogue because our ad is very specific and not just this general, like throw you into some sort of CRM somewhere. 
but let's start a dialogue around what you're looking for. I like that, man. All right, so there's a couple of questions, one here and one on Facebook. Let's go with this one first. Linda says, will someone at Street Text help me connect my Facebook with my personal page? I have a third page, not in my name because I don't want strangers to know about my political, social things, blah, 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 all that. Uh, she just wants to know if she's going to get help in connecting the business page to Street Text. Absolutely. So if you go to streettext.com and just start your free trial, it'll automatically prompt you on what you need to connect. And then if there's ever any sort of issues on like, oh, I don't know which one, blah, 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 there'll be someone there right away with you on support, um, kind of helping you pull the necessary API integration because it's going to be pulling in to your Facebook ad manager and then we'll simply start helping you and coaching you in terms of how to set up your account properly. All right, cool, cool. And then the other question, this one's on Facebook, goes with the nurturing flow. Do you do you guys help set that up? So saying, hey, look, this is what you do. You should put a video in there, then you should do a text, then you should do an email. Do you guys help with that flow? Oh, absolutely. All, they're all automated. You know, nine month long drip email campaign, text messaging, all of it. There's already automations that are set up, but we work with you on putting your brand inside of that. Because just because there's scripts there and it, you know, it's, it's faceless. It's, you know, there's no personality, there's nothing inside of it. So it's working with you to figure out what that looks like. You know, we, we have some great conversations too, depending on who you are, what type of personality you have. You know, I'm a high DI on the disc profile. I, I don't, what are you buddy? You're an I. Oh, he's an I. I. You're just a solid I. You're not like an <laughs> IS. Uh, I might be. I, I, I can't remember what the second one was, but I lead strong with an I. Shanky loves to talk about this. But I mean, it, it, you're, you're going to have natural strengths and you got to showcase those. Um, and you just, as long as it comes across as being genuine and authentic, that's what you lead with. But it, every, everybody's got to lead with an intro, a personality like, you know, themselves. And so we work with you on that and we really help you, you know, find yourself instead of doing something that feels or looks scripted. Because if you are scripted and you think you're scripted and it feels scripted, that person's going to feel that scription, that, that scripted uh, part of you as well. So we work together on making that feel more natural for you. I like that. Perfect, dude. All right. Anything I missed? Oh, wait. Russell's got one question. How much time on average does it take to set up and get the system running? It's such a hard question, but I think like Wendy, for example, um, who you see her process, she said, I blocked off an entire weekend. I like turned off all my ads. I changed my outfit 10 times and I filmed 10 different videos. So it looked like I was at a different place each time I did it. And then I turned my ads on after the weekend. So as long as you time block the time to get that process in place, what happens is you're building on a foundation. And we always say what commonly happens is you come to a mastermind, you see what somebody else is doing, and then you quickly compare your start game to their end game and you hesitate and you stop, you turn your ads off, you stop fixing things and you go back and forth. But it's really about just building the foundation. So Wendy took a weekend to build a solid foundation with her personality on it, kept everything running, but every time she comes to a mastermind and hears something, she's like, oh, I'm gonna add that to this email she implemented one thing, implemented one thing, implemented one thing. You're now a year later. And it's funny because you'll ask someone like that. So what is it that goes out next? And they'll often go, I'm not sure. Let me look like they don't even know anymore because it's become so automated and set up and they built it over time that they have this thing kind of working in the background while they're doing other things and then attending to it as specific blocks in the day. Perfect, man. I love that. I think that answered the question. Linda, you got some good questions. Just do me a favor, sign up for that free trial. You'll probably get Mark or Ira or Logan or somebody out there to, to hit you up. And Russell, great question. Definitely test them out. I know we had some other questions. I want to make sure I got that. Rama broke it down for us, how much it would cost. Rama, thank you for that. Uh, definitely sign up. And everybody on Facebook, thanks for joining us, Mark. Mark, yes. Mark, 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 Mark. My brother calls me Mark, but if you want, you can call me Marcus. Marcus sounds cooler, dude. Yeah. Marcus, Ira, anything I missed that you wanted to add? No, uh, just when you come, 
don't just uh, try to do this to, and set it and forget it type of mentality. Um, when you are deciding to try out street tax, like time block, uh, invest into getting to know us, invest in into learning um, that we have lots of different opportunities to connect in group settings on Zoom, just like this. And whether it's the subject is the lead generation or it's the conversion, or if it's tweaking your ads, or if it's the masterminds, um, you need to time block and prepare to develop your process. So I always tell people, it's like, hey, we need to reverse engineer the actual follow-up. Let's start there so that when you turn the ads on, you know exactly what they're going to get, how they're going to get it, what's going to be looked like. Everybody wants to start in a lead gen because it's like, hey, show me how many leads you can produce. I'm like, yeah. okay, we can do that, but you're going to quickly realize that you don't want to run all these ads and generate so many leads when you can't even, you know, you're not even putting your personal touch on it. It's just now you're getting lucky if you get a response. Very so true. Very just think point. about it that way. Let's, let's put together your brand and your systems and your personality and, and really focus in on that part so that naturally, you know, street text does have the best lead generation that I've seen on Facebook. I don't, until you show me, you know, like it's basically prove it um, because we, we have the numbers to prove it, especially with how many has been tested, but, Everybody can generate a lead. Very few people can create a system and a process that will, will, will nurture these leads and, and develop double digit or tri triple digit transactions over the long run. That's true, man. That's true. I love that. I so it's like, pick your own adventure. We have several of them, several different people that we can showcase. You got to pick your personality though, that resonates um, and, and then make it your own. And utilize your coach, like here at Street Text, once you sign up into that trial, like will save you the time and energy. So uh, frequently people will say, well, I've done this before. Well, when you haven't nothing to compare it to, you don't know how you're doing a comparison to it. So let's show you some of the best practices that we've learned in the last many years of doing this and focusing exclusively on this. And then you have like a something to look towards to compare to. And oftentimes on Facebook, you have no idea. You're running a Facebook ad. You're like, I'm, I often ask people like, How's it been going? And they're like, I don't know. Facebook's been spending my money. I think it's going okay because you have no reference point. There's the power of this collective community, us seeing it across North America. We know when you've landed on something so you can actually give a thumbs up to it and you can say, this ad's running well. It's what I should expect in my market. Now your strategy should be on the follow-up because a lead is no good without follow-up. Now you shift over and learn from the community and grow. So let us show you how to set those ads up properly. A lot of people are like, well, I'm going to keep my distance from those guys there because I don't want them to sell me on it. We're, we're not that way. We want to see people win. We want to see people. It, it, there's often times where I meet someone and I'm like, you're not ready. You don't have the budget for this. Like stick to our community, learn some stuff, come back in a couple months when you have some deals under your belt and then advocate the dollars towards this because we want to see a win. You know what? I'm going to ask you a question and then we'll leave it at that only because I'm curious. What budget do you usually suggest people start with? Well, for most people, $9 a day spend is good. But when you get into your uh, higher end markets where you're competing for market phase, like space, you might have to increase that spend a day if you're running that one ad upwards to $12, $13. Typically, we'll be able to establish an email cost. And then you want to make your budget so that you're at least getting an email lead a day. So that's what we'll be able to show you in trial. Like you've landed on something good or, hey, let's split test again. And we'll show you what looks good in your area so that you can see what lead flow looks like for you. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Thank you for joining us. This is recorded. I know two of you asked already. So this is going to go into our YouTube channel as well. It's playing in our Facebook community. And be sure to check out streettext.com. It's that easy, streettext.com. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Ira. Appreciate Thanks both of you. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Have a good day. Everybody.